don't forget to click that subscribe and bell icon to receive a notification each time I upload a new video. Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So it's part two of my road to Momigami. Hello you. What? Oh, you found a chewy have you and brought Teddy? <laughs> Not whether you can see him. Billy. There with his bum in the air. Oh dear me, dogs. Anyway, yes, so um, last week I showed you how I had stuck loads of bits of scraps of paper onto the pages of an old magazine to create a thicker magazine page. Um, so now I've done both sides. Both sides have now been done. They're all dry. Um, so now it's time for the Momigami part of the road to Momigami, if you know what I mean. Um, so what I'll do is I will go and sit over there with my overhead camera and show you what I'm going to be doing because I've already had questions about the fact that I've used matte medium and it's going to be water um, <laughs> um, resistant to water because I've used matte medium. Well, maybe not. Let me show you. Let's widen that shot a little bit. Da, da, da. No, that's just, that's it. You don't want to be looking down on my knees. That's better. Okay, so these are the three internal pages um, of the Momigami journal. Um, both sides have now been done, like I said. Um, they've been left to dry. Um, in fact, they've been sat outside in the sunshine because it's a lovely, warm, sunny day again here today. Um, so they've both been done on both sides. I'm keeping the fourth one to one side for a second because that one's going to be the cover. So as in the previous video, I did exactly the same thing for the other side, just using the Galleria Windsor & Newton matte medium. Now looking at the instructions on the back of the bottle, it says increases flow and transparency when mixed with acrylic colour it provides a matte finish. For best results, shake well before use and clean all equipment with water immediately after use. It doesn't say anything about it being um, a barrier for moisture. So, some of the comments that I had in the previous video were um, about would it be resistant to oil and would it be resistant to, you know, um, having any other medium put on top of it once you've done this. Now matte medium kind of acts like a, a clear gesso anyway, it does give it a little bit of a tooth, um, but that's not what we want to do. What we're now going to try and do is soften the pages up again um, to kind of give them a softer, because these are stiff, these pages are stiff as a board. However, what we want to do is we want to kind of get them all soft again like fabric and that's what momigami is. It's the art of adding moisture um, back into the page and then crumpling it until you get a kind of nice soft fabricy kind of texture. Now if you look at this corner I've already done it to this corner. Look at that already. But I haven't used oil um, and I haven't used water. So what I thought was, well, if oil is going to be resistant to the page because of the matte medium, then that means the matte medium has some kind of solvent base or oil base, if you know what I mean, which will be the binder that's in there. Because matte medium, all it is really, it's the base for paints. So any of your acrylic paints has this stuff in it. It's the binder that holds the pigment. And the thicker the medium, obviously the thicker the paint. So impasto paints will have super thick medium. Whereas the fluid acrylics has this kind of stuff in it. Um, so it should theoretically soak into the paper. Or allow stuff to soak into the paper. So I thought, well, if oil isn't going to do it, because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to put oil on your hands, rub it into your hands, and then start kneading it into the paper. Kneading and kneading and kneading into the paper, which takes for hours and hours and hours. Um, let me just put those two to one side. So I thought to myself, well, what is a different alternative to it? 
thought, well, what about hand sanitizer, which then contains alcohol, which is um, kind of like solvent based. It's alcohol based, like oil based. So that should work. Hand sanitizer does work. There you go. Hand sanitizer works. So I thought, well, what about ordinary moisturizing lotion? So I went to my local supermarket um, here in the UK, a place called The Range, um, which is a kind of arts and craftsy stuff for the home. Um, and I found this stuff, softening foot lotion, which is a moisturizer, and it contains menthol, tea tree, and peppermint oil. So apart from smelling absolutely beautiful, it's also going to act as a moisturizer. So all I'm going to do is <laughs> I'm just going to spread it all over the paper and already I can smell the tea tree and the menthol. All good stuff. Then I'm going to flip it over. And then I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to start breaking those fibres down again. And you can already start to feel it getting softer and softer and softer as you're doing it. And I'm just doing it from the outside in. And as I'm going in, I'm just crumpling and kneading the paper. Like so, I know this obviously looks and probably feels kind of counterproductive and what the hell is he doing? But do you know what? <laughs> it's so, so satisfying. It's like an implosion. i bring it back out again. All those fibres start to break down. Do it again. Now I am being very careful, trying not to rip it. And then all out again, all out again. Smooth it. Flip it over. Keep on doing it, keep on doing it and doing it and doing it until you're kind of happy. And you can see some of it has soaked in. You can see in certain areas it's got a little bit darker, which is fine. See, I bought two, I think I'm only going to need one, and this cost me a pound, so not a lot at all. And, oh yes, the smell of the menthol and the tea tree oil, absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Okay, so, to let it dry out, I'm going to just open it back up again. Flatten it. Now, apparently, when you do it like this, the paper shrinks. Apparently. <laughs> That's what they say when you do this kind of thing, is that the paper will shrink. That's okay. As long as it shrinks uniformly, I don't mind. But look at that now, from that stiff board to foldable fabric. So 
So I'm going to go away and I'm going to do the same thing again to the other two internal ones and then I'll be right back. So I'm going to lay that one on the floor. hands feel beautiful. That should do it, I think. Okay, so that was the third sheet. So I'm going to leave those to dry now overnight. Uh, it's actually Monday. Um, obviously this video isn't going to be going live until Tuesday. So it's got all night to dry. I'm also going to put them outside in the sun. I'm just going to grab some a baby wipe just to help clean my hands even though they are beautifully soft baby soft hands now um, and I'll just use that just to clean see that glue is where I stuck all the pages down so that's the matte medium so as you can see it is it has kind of penetrated and made it softer all good stuff so like I said um, my hands smell beautiful now so I'll have a clean up and then tomorrow morning when they've had a chance to dry overnight we can then start thinking about putting the rest of the journal together in readiness for next year and then I'll talk to you about what I'm going to do with the covers Okay, so it's now, what time? Uh, about 12.30 on Tuesday. Um, so the pages have had all night to um, kind of dry, soften, mellow, and no longer stiff cardboard. So they've had completely all night. So the fibers in that paper have, have gone soft and actually it feels it actually feels really, really nice. Um, and there's still the smell of the tea tree. So um, the little hint of peppermint. Yeah, the little hint of peppermint. So I'm really, really happy about that. So what I'll do is I'll turn over to the overhead camera again, and then I'll explain what I'm going to do now to bind these into a journal and what I did with that fourth sheet that I didn't put the lotion onto.
So let's turn over and I'll explain. Okie dokie. So, like I said, these are those really stiff pages that we were dealing with yesterday. I mean, look how kind of soft and pliable and you can do almost anything with them. Now, there were a few um, casualties, a couple of casualties. Um, now, which one was it? Oh, it was this one. Um, this one, when um, I was looking at it, there was a hole just here. Um, but that's fine. And also, there's a couple of torn edges just there where I've been needing it. But apart from that, they're in pretty good nick pretty good shape and I'm fairly kind of happy with the way that they're looking. So I'm going to put that to one side. Now this was <coughs> this was the cover that I wanted to use for the cover and you can tell I've not scrunched this, I've not added any of the lotion to it at all. It looks just pretty much as it was but what I did do, in, I went the exact opposite. <laughs> um, before I added on the second coat of the um, the fragments, I actually lined it with a piece of craft card on both sides. So actually, I went thicker on the cover. Um, so I stuck down some craft card, then I covered the craft card in all the paper fragments. So that's what you saw me doing originally, um, and that's the side I can now fold it because I left a gap so that I had um, a nice fold. So these are going to become the covers, or this is going to become the covers for the journal because I wanted it to be um, have a bit more of a stiff cover, if you if you understand what I mean. So as far as the papers are concerned, all I have to do now is just flip them over and just gently. So you're going to get a couple of bits um, that are going to spring. Um, fold them over, fold them down the middle. Like so. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create just a simple three page signature. So three times four, that's going to give us the 12 pages that we're going to need for the journal and there's the cover. So that's going to be my journal for the year but obviously um, I want to bind it. So what I'm going to do is I've got my, I did have, there it is, right next to me, I've got one of my little sewing kits with me. Um, now normally I would use a pokey tool, an awl to poke through, but I don't think I need to on this. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a sashiko needle. So a sashiko is another form of um, Japanese art, um, but it's stitching if you like. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to push through there and then about an inch down and I'm going to push through again and about an inch at this side and I'm going to just push through again ah, and you one wouldn't be as easy as the rest. There we go. So you can see the needle there. Now I haven't moved the pages much, he says, moving the pages. I'll just, yeah, that's okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab some embroidery thread. Um, now then, should we do red? Because that's gonna stand out nicely. I think so. Let's just do red. And all I'm going to need is just maybe a double length, I would have said. That'll do. It's not going to be a huge amount needed. Uh, a pair of scissors. Like so. 
Um, now then, did I have or have I got a needle threader? <laughs> yes. There you go, you see. Short of now to have got. So I'll just put that through. Wet it. I'm not going to wax it. There's no real need. There's no need to wax. Perfect. Yeah. Right, let's just move those out of the way. And I'm going to see if I can now try and follow that line. There's not that many sheets to be honest, so you could actually do it manually. Just like that look. You can pretty much see where you've been, where the hole was. Okay. So I'm leaving a bit of thread. I'll just tidy those up and then I can go back through the hole that we made. There it is. There it is. Try and there it is. I think. Yeah, that was it. And then back through the cover. Trying to find the hole in the cover. <laughs> there we go. And it's just pretty much the same as how you would do. I'm um, just stitching in a signature in your in a normal journal. There we are. And I should just be able to find the holes quite easily. Because they're right where we left them. There we go. How easy was that? Alright, so we're back up on that side. And then all I have to do is just follow that needle back through to the middle. Yeah, on. And make sure I've left enough. It's always the same. My eyes are fucked. My eyes are fucked. I've not pulled tight yet, so it's fairly easy to see where I've gone. I knew I should have clipped them together. There it is. Chip. Really? <laughs> Come on now. There we go. And then just to finish off, have I stitched through the thread? Right, after a few minutes worth of faffing about, <laughs> I was able to untangle it. Right, so what I'm going to do is just put one side of the thread of the one that comes all the way down. And I'm not pulling hugely tight because obviously I don't want it to rip the paper. And then I'm just going to tie a knot in it. And that's just going to hold it in place. There we go. So we've now got a stitched journal ready to play with for next year. Now, I did say originally, if you remember, um, that once it was done, um, those people that really, really struggle 
with the problem of looking at a blank piece of paper when you're starting that journal page. Well, you're not going to have that problem now, are you? So there are 12 pages here um, in which to play on. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and that doesn't even include the covers. So that is my Mummy Gammy Paper art journal, ready to play for next year. And I could just, if I wanted to, maybe just stitch even a clip onto that because it's soft enough and it's durable enough to be able to stitch through, just like fabric and just like ordinary paper, even though there are, technically, there's three or four layers there. Um, you've got your original paper, and then you've got your paper on top, the fragments on top of that side, and also the fragments on that side. So you've actually got quite a few layers. So it does kind of feel almost leathery. So, but there we go. So that's gonna be my Mommy Gammy journal for 2023. So like I said, I hope you've been able to follow the same steps that I've shown you because they're not really um, complicated. It's just a long process. The process of sticking all the paper down, letting it dry, and then the process of softening it again with kneading with your hands does take a while. But even if you only do one sheet a week, you've still got plenty of time before 2023 starts. So or maybe you want to build an even bigger journal. I don't know. You might want to do different ones, different sizes. Um, it's entirely up to you. But as long as you join me next year, then I'll be very, very happy. Now, I'm not going to put that clip on. I'll change my mind. <laughs> OK, so that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this journal. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. And don't forget you can access your exclusive angel only content over on my website. There's a link in the description area below. Thank you.